We are back. Road to the Derby. Andrew Capone from Who's Got the Action. Uh, Caleb Knight from Taking a Stand. Caleb, last week, three for three. It, uh, it was a good one for us. Um, taking a look at last weekend's preps, the Withers. Uh, numbers came back a little low. I saw time form was a little higher than, than the buyers, but uh, I think that that race is going to be a toss for most people. Um, taking a look at the Holy Bull down in Florida. I was down there. It was a great time. Uh, I will say it was a great race. Simplification, missing the break, changes that pace set up a lot. Um, Safi Joseph came in for the win there. Horse was much the best. Interesting to see where that horse points to next. If he skips the fountain of youth and just waits for the Florida Derby. And then the Santa Anita prep, uh, we spoke about it last week. Nothing I was really excited about. Five horse. Messier has insane numbers. Baffert's hay and oats. What can I say? Uh, any thoughts on last weekend's preps? Yeah, I think you were all over it, Andrew. I think you had the two winners and a long shot winner or almost a long shot winner anyway. Um, you know, simplification did kind of have some bad luck at the break there. So I'll be real interested to see uh, what they do with that horse next because he looks uh, he looks promising out of that field. So, yeah, it was a, it was a good weekend and some good racing and uh, looking forward to another good one before we get into the big 50 point preps. Exactly. Uh, this weekend we have the Sam F. Davis. We're down in Tampa Bay. Uh, we're going one and one sixteenth of a mile on the dirt. Uh, unlucky field or lucky field of 13 here with one AE. 12 will make the starting gate. Um, pretty excited here. I'll, I'll start us off, Caleb, on the rail. Um, taking a look at the rail here, uh, Mr. Rum Runner, it's going to make it be a big step up to say the least. Uh, nothing the rail on dirt at Tam has been good. It's been pretty dead. Uh, one and one sixteenth is going to be a little too much to ask, in my opinion. This one's going to be a clear toss from the beginning for me. What do you think of the two? The number two, unpredictable Bay. I, I think he's a big pace player in this field. He is your most likely leader, stretching out from those uh, sprints at Churchill all the way out to a mile and the sixteenth. He, he's a horse that had a, a bit of a, a bridesmaid syndrome for a little while, settling for a lot of second places, and really broke through last time out with a dominant nine-length win. Sometimes these horses just need to get that first victory for the light bulb to turn off. But uh, to me, this is a horse that needs to prove it one more time before I'd probably be too willing to uh, back him in a spot like this. The number three classic Causeway is your morning line favorite. And I think this is a deserving favorite here. This is a horse that I'm fairly high on. So uh, He has been a little bit of a disappointment being beaten as the favorite each of his last two. Uh, but I thought that that race he's exiting, that Kentucky Jockey Club, was very strong. Uh, there is what projects to be a somewhat uh, fairly contested pace here. So we'd have to think the plan is to not get into a speed battle at some of the cheap speeds. But I do think Classic Causeway is a huge player in this race. Next up, we've got a couple of Mark Cass horses. Andrew, what would you think of them? So looking at the four here, Golden Glider down from Canada, uh, one of three casting horses, um, horses against the bias. And it's a closer like this in a field with not too much speed signed on. I, I don't necessarily think it's going to happen. Um, Cassie's been here for, for quite a bit working the horse in Central Florida. The track bias has to flip to make me interesting. Um, I would probably use underneath and verticals. I think it's going to be passing some tiring horses late. Uh, but if we just take a quick look at the bias for Tampa, it's uh, it's been it's been pretty impressive. Um, Tampa Bay Downs on the on the dirt routes, we're, we're seeing only 20 percent closing. So we're definitely seeing spo more forward. I'm talking about that rail I mentioned with the one horse earlier. Um, we're only seeing 29 percent one through three. It seems like that four, five, six in the middle really helps on the routes and, and helps that cutoff when we get to that first turn. Uh, moving on to the next horse here, uh, another Cassie. Um, the second of three, again, the run style doesn't fit these races, especially with not a heavy front end. Grade three winner out of Canada. I would need 25, 30 to one to get myself interested in this horse. Um, I feel bad because it seems like Cassie is a trainer that, that keeps on having horses um, almost right there. And then it's just not the right run style or against the bias or whatever it may be. They just can't put two and two together. Um, this is going to be another one I'm going to toss. Uh, what would you think of the six and the seven? Yeah, the number six trademark, another horse that seems to uh, more than likely be a factor in the early pace. It seems like when you know, Victoria Oliver stretched this horse out, he turned into a completely different animal, uh, displaying some front running tactics and just running away with a couple of races. Um, he's not going to get that trip in this race. At least it seems unlikely that he gets that uncontested lead that he enjoyed in his last two. And I I'm not really sure that he's going to be good enough to win from off the pace against this field. I'm not sure he's a need the lead type of horse, but I don't think he's going to get that comfy trip that he had in his last two starts. But this is a horse that seems to be going the right way in his form cycle, but, but not one I'm going to be super interested in. 
The number seven, make it big. This horse has done nothing wrong from three career starts. It is a little bit fair to wonder what he's been running against in some of those starts. So a couple of Florida bred races and then the Springboard Mile over at Remington. I haven't had a ton of runbacks from there, so hard to really say what was in some of those races. But it is Safi Joseph Jr. shipping over to Tampa uh, with Jose Ortiz coming in for the mound. So there's a lot to like here. He's got a very trackable run style. And if he's good enough, then this horse could be pretty live at what should be a pretty fair price. I think that leaves us with number eight, Ship Sational is the next one, Andrew. Moving on to Ship Sational, interesting little horse here. Um, one I'm going to be talking about in a little bit. Um, I really am a fan of this horse. I know it shipped him well. Baker brought the house the horse down very early. Um, a New York bred that continued to stretch out again and again and just loves the distance. One and one sixteenth will not be an issue. This horse is going to be a very live long shot. Um, training very well in the morning. A little bit of a layoff concerns me, but JJ comes across the state for the mount. Uh, I'll be using this horse everywhere. Moving on to the nine horse, Howling Time. Coming out of the Kentucky Jockey Cup, uh, we talked about this race early. It's been proven to be a key race. Um, this Dale Roman seems to be a little bit short on the morning line for me. I think the distance is going to be a little bit here. Um, seems like a lot of love this. A lot of people have love for this horse, but uh, for me, it, it just isn't going to do it for me. I'm going to take a pass on this one. Um, what do you think of the ten and the eleven? Yeah, uh, the number ten volcanic. This is the third Mark Cassie horse. He definitely holds a, a strong hand in this field. This is the only one that I would expect isn't going to be at the back of the pack going into the turn here, but a little bit of a tough horse for me to get a handle on. Uh, he has a, uh, you know, just for a line through the hopeful where he was in way over his head and he hasn't really done anything you know, wrong, but at the same time, it just feels like this horse maybe isn't quite this good. Um, I would like to see a couple more starts. This feels like a pretty ambitious spot to put this horse in, but um, you never know, you know, Mark Cassie does have a strong uh, hand in this race, but this is not a horse I'm going to be too excited to bet, uh, especially at anything near that uh, morning line. The number 11 though, strike hard. This is a horse that I'm interested in. Um, this is a horse that has one bad race in the grade three at Iroquois at Churchill, but in all of his races in Florida, which is an exclusively a golf stream, he's really showed up every time. Um, he's you know, got a couple of wins at a mile. He had a second place last out, the simplification. Who we just talked about as having a big run in the Holy Bull last weekend. So this is a horse that I think could really sit that tracking trip and sit about third or fourth, let the speeds go ahead of him, and then make a big run late uh, if he can get the distance. So Stroy Cart is a horse that uh, I will have on some tickets for sure. I think rounding out the field is the 12, and then I guess the 13 if he draws in. Uh, Andrew, any opinions there? I, I really, I really looked at this twelve over and over again. Um, I think Kitten Mischief is is a turf horse here. Uh, I'm not necessarily sold on this one. Um, turf horse and dirt, stepping up, stretching out. This horse is a complete wild card. Um, Thomas had this. This horse was actually entered for the Holy Bull um, last week. Uh, was on the Probables. They were talking about it. Horse has been off LASIK, on LASIK, off LASIK, on LASIK. Um, horse broke. The maiden in a sloppy winter duck race. Uh, Aqueduct winter races numbers have come back and, and have not really improved anywhere. I don't see this horse pick in the picture. And then the last one, the 13, also eligible. Paco pick up the mount. Um, little would need to do a lot here. Never trying this distance. Coming from the outside rail. Uh, if this horse gets in, I, I hope Paco somehow takes money and I can toss it. Um, looking at this race, uh, what was your top pick and long shot? Yeah, so I think it's a really contentious field, so it feels a little bit bad, but unfortunately, I do think that the horse to beat is the morning line favorite, number three, Classic Causeway. I just think he comes in here as the most proven commodity of any of the other horses. I thought that Kentucky Jockey Club race at Churchill has proven to be an excellent race. Uh, the third place horse, White Abario, we just saw him come back to win the Holy Bull last weekend. Another horse that finished mid-pack in that jockey club race was Call, Call Me Midnight, a horse that we tipped for the Lecomte a couple of weeks ago, where he was a big long shot winner. That race has been extremely productive. That is a race that really went to the closers, despite the pace not seeming that quick on paper. The front end of that race really fell apart. I think Classic Causeway moved a little bit too early, but did show the fact that he does have a gear in him where he can rate. He doesn't just need the lead. 
he passed a couple horses, grabbed the lead at the top of the stretch, and then just got a little bit tired. So I think you got the perfect jockey here with Irad getting up. I expect him to get a good trip sitting just off the pace, and I think he is going to be tough in this race. As far as my long shot goes, I'm going back to a horse we, I talked about briefly earlier, which is number 11, Strike Hard. He's 6-1 to one on the morning line, so I'm not sure if that really counts as a long shot, but there's a lot of horses in here that are floating between 5-1 to one and 10-1. to one. I think you'll get every bit of 6-1 to one on this horse come post time. Uh, these are low-profile connections that traditionally don't take a lot of money. But this horse has been really good, uh, especially at Gulfstream. He's you know ran second in the Mucho Macho Man, which was two simplification. We talked about the trip that he had in the Holy Bull where he was probably best. And Strike Hard was seven lengths clear of the third place horse in that race. Uh, two back, he crushed an optional allowance field, uh, or optional claiming 75 at Gulfstream. Yeah, my question here is the two turn question. His one time trying it at Churchill, it, it didn't really go well for him, but that was also a grade three in his first start against winners. So I'm willing to give him a pass on that. You know, if you're looking at his pedigree, there, he seems like a mile and a 16th should be reasonable. So I'm going to go back to strike hard and give him one more chance to get the distance here at a nice price. I got to I got to touch on something you said, which is very interesting. How many one turn horses are doing two turns for the first time between the Sam F. Davis and El Camino? It's it's interesting this year. It sets up like a lot of the prep races. There wasn't necessarily time um, to get that two turns in them. Um, my top pick here is going to be make it big. Jose Ortiz off the withers ships down off the withers winning with early voting ships down to Tampa. Um, the Florida bred with Safi winner last week at the Holy Bull for Safi two for two. Two for two in Florida preps so far. Horse is a third. Um, <clears throat> horse has its you know third major derby trail in him. Uh, horse points comes from the springboard. They were talking about it right away. Focused at the, after that win at Remington that they were going to go to Tampa. Um, I really think this horse is going to step forward. A mile to mile and sixteenth won't be an issue. I really really like this horse as my top pick, especially at a nine to two money line. I think it has the good post position and the correct run style for what we're going to see. As terms of long shot, I'm going to go with Sensational here. Uh, Baker shipped down this horse pretty early. Uh, they've been pointing to this race. This is his short chance to get into the Derby gates. Um, horse will be in a great stalking position on the outside. If the pace doesn't get too hot up front, I think this is one of those horses that can get in a good position on the top of the stretch, lay it down, and close like it's did in previous races. Um, that's what we have for you for this field of 13 for the Sam F. Davis. Uh, very excited at 1, 1 16th of a mile this coming Saturday. At, Tam at beautiful Tampa Bay Downs. Uh, we were three for three last weekend. Hope to improve here. Uh, please like and subscribe and also check out our El Camino Real video posted later today.